What up, YouTube? Team Movies here. On Disney Plus, I know there's lots of very underrated Disney anime films there. So I decided to go ahead and do my 10 most, like 10 an Disney anime films that I find to be very underrated. Now, these are really films that, you know, of course, lots of Disney anime films get talked about, whether you talk about Frozen or uh, Cinderella or Lion King or whatnot. But there are some, like, very. There are lots of anime films that not many people really talk about as much as those. So, so with that being said, here are my 10 most underrated Disney anime films. All right. Uh, coming in at number 10, it's probably the only Pixar movie on my list, because it's actually the most underrated Pixar gem. Although well, Bugs Life is kind of underrated, too. But, but this one, I really got kicked out. And, and that is The Good Dinosaur. I mean, this movie, it's not really Pixar's best work, nothing like that. But I but I really got quite, I quite got kicked out of The Good Dinosaur. You know, it's about this uh, young dinosaur named Arlo, uh, who his uh, parents are voiced by uh, Jeffrey Wright and Francis McDormand, and his uh, two siblings. Uh, so Arlo is like the uh, mighty uh, dinosaur that, uh, and really the uh, mighty dinosaur also, uh, of course, ended up being wiped out for uh, six, five, uh, you know, million years ago. And so uh, Paul Arlo, voiced by this actor named Raymond Oka, as it being uh, downriver, and he ends up being uh, bruised, battered, and like miles away from his own and all. And so here he meets uh, this uh, this like uh, neat editor uh, boy, you know, uh, named Spot, voiced by uh, Jack Wright. And there's like a nice friendship that uh, intertwined, like that is between two. This is really terrific. I mean, sad to say, it is. Out of, you know, Pixar movies, they always have been a hit, like, lots of Pixar movies make villains and villains and whatnot. Good Dinosaur is, is one of the few Pixar movies that have flopped at the box office. I was surprised how badly this movie did. Like, it got released around Thanksgiving, uh, perfect time. I mean, it should have done much better, but it didn't do so well. And it's shame, too, because it's a really great anime film. You know, it's very cute. Uh, the animation's great. Love the voices. You also got uh, Sam Ellis in this. Uh, Steve Zahn. Uh, Blackish Dude. Uh, Marcus uh, Scribner's in this. Some really great uh, voice talents. And it's directed by uh, Peter uh, Schoen. He did a great job of directing. Such a... Yes. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, some of the guys, um, yeah, the good dinosaur is really underrated. Definitely go check out that one after you guys have seen that. All right, coming in at number nine, it is the Emperor's New Groove. Now, this is really, now this is one Disney film no one barely talks about today. And, I mean, you've got David Spade voicing a llama. And it's like an updated version of the, uh, of, you know, the Emperor's New, uh, Crunk, uh, Crunk. And, uh, I really got kicked out of the Emperor's New group. You know, you've got, a uh, great voice talents that includes the likes of, uh, David Spade, Patrick Warburton, John Goodman. Yeah. And anyway, it's more like this, uh, you know, um, arrogant uh, young emperor uh, named named uh, Cusco is ends up being transformed into a llama uh, by his uh, power hungry um, advisor. And so you got so you got the uh, you know uh, the devious uh, diva uh, Yasma who ends up being shredded in the jungle, and so uh, his only chance to get back home um, and reclaim the high uh, life. Uh, the high, the high life arrest is with a, a good heart uh, peasant named uh, Pacha, and so together they end up uh, must return to Akuzo uh, and to like uh, they must uh, you know return to Kuzo to uh, the uh, trouble before like uh, Yasma ends up tracking them down and finish them off and all. It's it's a really great film. I mean, they also did a sequel, which the sequel's not that good, but the Emperor's New Groove is really terrific. Great music involved in this. 
Uh, David Spade was pretty great in this film. Uh, Patrick Warburton is always a given track. Patrick Warburton and anything. Yeah, The Emperor's New Group, is, it's really an anime film that no one barely talks about, and it's really great. If you, I mean, I'm, not, I'm trying to remember the, if uh, they got this on Disney+. Plus. I got them checked, but uh, The Emperor's New Group is a really great one. Alright, coming in at number 8, it is Brother Bear. Now, I guess you could say this is like Lion King, but with bears instead. Uh, you've got, um, you got this, uh, young, um, it's pretty much about, like, this, uh, young, uh, Indian, um, named, uh, Kane, who is, uh, this, uh, who ends up being, uh, brave with a, uh, particular, uh, distaste for bears, and when his, uh, and when his, uh, brother named, uh, Stick, Stick up, played by D.B. Swinney, ends up being killed by one, Kenny uh, ends up being, um, turning, can I, in turn, uh, ends up killing the bear, only to be, uh, magically transformed into one, so, yeah, so he ends up going from a human to, uh, to becoming a bear, and his, uh, brother, uh, Denai, you know, voiced by, uh, Jason, uh, Rice, vows to, uh, kill the bear, uh, can I, uh, ends up killing the bear that, uh, can I ha has become, only, so, uh, you know, Ken and I had to try to find a way to, uh, get transformed back into human. Brother Bear is terrific. Great animation. Great voice sounds. You also got Rick Moranis, Dave Thomas. Yeah, Brother Bear is a really great one. And Walking Phoenix doing an anime film, which is always odd. I mean, Walking Phoenix is not really much of a, uh, anime kid, uh, like, he's not really known for family affair films. So it was pretty cool hearing a Walking Phoenix in this. But yeah, Brother Bear is really great. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. And anyway, uh, now Brother Bear Two, I'm not really fond of, but the first Brother Bear is really good. Coming in at number seven, it is Return to Neverland. Now, usually these uh, you know, home to video um. You know, usually these home to video uh Disney sequels are actually pretty terrible. Like there are some pretty horrible ones, like the Aladdin sequels. But Return to Neverland is really good. I mean, it's it is a follow to the uh, nineteen fifty three um Pierre Pan film, and it's where uh you know Wendy ends up being uh you know all grown up and uh, has children of her own uh and she also uh, claims. She also uh, comes them with the uh, tales of Peter Pan, and so like Wendy's uh, stubborn twelve-year-old daughter uh, Jane has like no patience for uh, nonsense um, until like Captain Hook ends up using uh, the girl as a uh, pawn in uh, capturing uh, his arch rival um, Peter Pan, as well as as well as Tinkerbell and the Lost Boys and all. And it's I guess you could say it's like similar to the original, but this time it's uh, Wendy's uh, daughter here. Yeah, Return to Neverland is I really got kicked out of it. I mean. Is it as good as the? Uh, is it as good as the uh, original Peter Pan? Of course not. But I still really quite got a kick out of it. Interesting voice sounds. Um, this is definitely one of the better, um, you know, uh, straight to DVD um, Disney sequels there is. But that's not really saying much. And it was pretty cool seeing Captain Hook back. I mean, granted, this is what, like I said, it was a home to video release, so it didn't get released in theirs. But yeah, Retraction Neverland is still pretty good. Coming in at number six, it's another uh, straight to DVD, you know, uh, Disney anime sequel. And that is The Jungle Book 2, I should say. Hold on. Alright, sorry about that. Anyway, number six is The Jungle Book 2. Now, like Return to the Neverland, obviously this is not as good as the uh, animated Disney one. But it's where uh, Mowgli, um, you know, who's, who's the uh, wild child Mowgli, has like uh, grown uh, frigidly with his uh, life in the, uh, rural, in the uh, village. And so he ends up sneaking back into the jungle to uh, meet up with his animal friends, including uh, Baloo, you know, voiced by John Goodman. And uh, Mowgli's uh, this person ends up worrying his family, and uh, as well as the uh, stepsister uh, Shanti, who's voiced by uh, Mia Whitman. And so uh, Mowgli also has to end up facing off his uh, old foe, uh, who's you know Shere Khan. Now, jo Jungle Book Two is 
It's really good. I mean, Haley Joe Osment ended up voicing uh, Mowgli. You had John Goodman as a uh, as a Baloo. John Goodman as Baloo was a great uh, casting. I really, I always quite like that uh, casting. That that uh, cast choice. And you know the story was pretty decent. Like I said, it's not as good as the original Jungle Book, but it's it's just pretty it's not pretty good. And I really get kicked out of this movie. If you guys haven't seen the Jungle Book two yet? I think give it a go. I used to watch this thing on uh, when it got released on like uh, I think Disney Channel a couple times. It's really good. All right, coming in at number five, it is Robin Hood. Now this is Robin Hood with the fox. Now. This may sound weird, but this is seriously my favorite Robin Hood incarnation. You know, there's been so many uh, incarnations of Robin Hood over the years, where you talk about, you know, the, the uh, Aaron Flynn one, or even the horrible Russell Crowe one, or the horrible Tara Egerton one. The best, in my opinion, will is and will always be the one with the fox. I mean, you've got, you know, speaking of Baloo, you got uh, Phil Harris, who, of course, voiced Baloo in the original Jungle Book. You know, uh, he actually voiced the uh, character of uh, Lil John. Uh, you had um, you had uh, Brian Bedford as the uh, voice of the Tyro of uh, Robin Hood. Uh, you also had uh, Peter uh, Osifo. So, yeah, uh, the the, um, the uh, Robin Hood one with the fox. It's it's a really underrated one. Like it's you know, it's not really a Disney film. Lots of people really, you know talk about today, but it's really good. It's a, it's a bit of a classic. Like, there are actually people who have seen this movie and will tell you how great of a classic it is. I mean, it got released in, um, I can't remember when it got released. I think probably, I think it got released either in the 50s or 60s, or probably could have been the 70s, one of the two. I mean, the movie doesn't really hold up or anything. Like, it's not a Disney classic that holds up as most Disney classics, but it's still a pretty good one, in my opinion. Alright, coming in at number four, it is Hercules. Now, it is the Disney anime one. And the Disney Hercules, it's really, like, there are actually a uh, couple of groups who will, you know, uh, claim this movie is awesome. But there are actually people who actually never even heard of this Hercules. And it's a shame, too, because this Hercules has, it is, like, one of the most uh, darkest uh, Disney anime films there is. Uh, you got, um... You, also, uh, you got um, Tate Donovan, who voices uh, Hercules. Uh, you got Dang DeVito as uh, Pilocrest. Uh, you got James Woods as the uh, evil villain, uh, Haters. Uh, you got um, probably one of the most underrated uh, Disney princess. Uh, you got uh, Princess uh, Megara. Some really great uh, characters, great uh, effects, very visual. Yeah, the original Hercules. Is Grammy. It's a shame that they never really went ahead the sequel to this, or at least a whole new video sequel. But yeah, again, most straight to DVD Disney sequels are not good. So, but uh, yeah, Her the original Hercules. It's it's definitely like that. And Hunchback Notre Dame are probably two of the most darkest of uh, Disney anime films there are. But Hercules is still a great one. If you guys haven't seen Hercules, give it a go. It's also probably my favorite Hercules. Uh, Adaptation. Like, you know, we have, of course had loads of other Hercules over the years. Where they talk about the horrible Kel Lutz one, the horrible, uh, you know, the horrible uh, Dwayne Johnson one. But this is definitely my favorite uh, Hercules incarnation. And it's animated, so. Alright, coming in at number three, it is Bolt. Now, this movie got released in 2008, and granted, this actually did get a couple of Oscar nominations. Like it got an Oscar nomination for best original song for uh for that um I thought I lost you that uh John Travolta and Miles Cyrus sang. It actually uh got a nomination for best anime feature. Obviously it lost out against another Disney film which was Wally. Which Wally was good, but this may come to an unpopular opinion. I actually prefer both over Wally. Wally was good, don't get me wrong, that Anyway, uh, that little, uh, you know, a uh, little robot thing, that's a cute little character. But I still prefer Boat. I, I actually think Boat should have won Best Anime Feature over Wally, but... But it's still pretty good. I mean, you got got uh, John Travolta, who voices this, uh... 
who actually voices this uh, um, dork who doesn't really know that he's on a TV show, and uh, he also thinks he has, you know, uh, actual powers. But when uh, Bo Enta is uh, accidentally shipped from Hollywood, from his uh, Hollywood soundstage to the main streets of uh, New York City, uh, he has a beginning, um, you know, uh, his, like, most amazing adventure, and uh, he also says that you find his uh, owner, uh, Penny, voiced by Miles Cyrus. Yeah, Boat is, you know, it's actually directed by uh, the same guy who gave us, uh, who also gave us um, Zootopia, and uh, he gave us some other interesting Disney films. Uh, really cool director, too. But Boat is, Boat is great. You know, a great voice talent. I mean, I I still cannot get that song out of my head, that uh, I Do I Lost This Song. I mean, John Travolta and Miles Cyrus, that is literally a music duo I never thought that could actually work. But, hey, it worked out pretty well um, with those two. But, uh, yeah, if you guys never really seen a boat, give it a go. I mean, how on earth Disney never done ahead? The sequel to this is still beyond me, but it's really terrific. All right, coming in at number two, it is going to be Tarzan. Now, like Hercules, there have also been other adaptations of Tarzan, where they talk about, uh... You know, we talk about the uh, Alexander Skarsgård one, uh, the, uh, uh, of course, the uh, ones from the 30s and 40s and all. But the best Tarzan adaptation is the anime one. You know, you got Tony Goldwyn as the Atiro of Tarzan. Uh, you've got uh, Mini Driver as the voice of uh, Jane. I mean, me, Tarzan, Jane. Great voice cast. Uh, you also got, um, you even got Glenn Close, uh, Brian Bless, uh, Rosie O'Donnell is also in this. And obviously, some of the most iconic songs are in this, and lots of them are sung by Phil Collins. I mean, whether you talk about uh, "You'll You'll Be in My Heart" or "A Strange Like Me," I mean, this has some really iconic Disney songs. There is, and yeah, I mean, F Phil Collins, he's he's the man, and Tarzan really proved that. I mean, if you guys never really seen the uh, original, like the animated Tarzan movie yet, do yourself a favor, go check it out. It's a really great one. And it doesn't really get talked about a whole lot. I mean, they're all minor, like you know, my majority of people who have probably seen this film, but they're all also people who probably never even knew that there was an animated Tarzan to begin with. But uh, yeah, it's it's a really good one. All right. Now, my number one most underrated Disney animated film, in my opinion, goes to a Goofy movie. I mean, a Goofy movie, you know, uh, it is a movie that stars Goofy from, uh, you know, Mickey Mouse fame. And, you know, Goofy has lo had lots of uh, cartoons uh, over the years. You know, Go Goofy's been around for, like, forever. But a Goofy movie... Is hands down awesome. I literally saw that Ron Tomales has this movie at a 44%. I'm sorry. Why? Who? Like, who on earth does not like the Goofy movie? A Goofy movie is... It's just awesome. You know, come on. You have Goofy going on a road trip with his son, Max. And... You know, also has some really, uh, you know, great songs in this. Like, where they talk about uh, After Today, On the Open Road, uh, Stand Out. I mean... It's not really much a, like, you know, it's not really much of a uh, music per se, but it has some really great songs in it. And you, know, you got Bill Farmer as the voice of Goofy. I mean, he does the Goofy voice very well. Yeah, I mean, if you guys never, like, now, they also did a sequel called Another Goofy Movie, which I admit I thought was a big step down from a Goofy movie. <laughs> but a Goofy movie is still great. You know, I gotta update my favorite road trip movies and actually add a Goofy movie in that list. I mean, I did my 10 favorite road trip movies last, like, last year. I gotta update that and actually add Goofy movie because a Goofy movie is it's such a great road trip film. I mean, it's really funny. Uh, come on, you also have, uh, like, whoever knew the al alphabet uh, soup talk uh, will work out well. You know, you also have... Uh, like, uh, Max's, uh, Crush Roxanne, I mean, I'm not gonna, like, if I knew a couple of, uh, you know, like, that was the kind of a attractive cartoon character, I, I won't bet there, but, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely go check out a Goofy movie if you guys haven't seen it, it's, it's a really great one. Alright. 
Alright, that's pretty much it. Alright, let me do the quick one now. 10, uh, uh, the good dinosaur. 9, the Emperor's New Groove. 8, Brother Bear. Uh, 7, Return to Neverland. 6, uh, The Jungle Book 2. 5, Robin Hood. 4, Hercules. 3, both. 2, Tarzan. And 1, a Goofy movie. Guys, definitely check out a Goofy movie. I mean, I think that's on Disney Plus if I'm not mistaken. Like, if you see a Goofy movie on Disney Plus, do yourself a favor. You know, uh, stop, you know, stop whatever you're doing and actually watch it. It's, it's awesome. You got a lighter, bro? He does. Hey, bro. Hey, you got a lighter? Uh, now, there's also some other um, Disney anime films. Uh, there are, uh, let's see. Now, A Bug's Life is definitely underrated. Um, let's see. Uh, Oliver and Company, The Great Mouse Detective. Um, there's Atlantis, uh, The Lost Empire. Uh, there's the DuckTales movies, uh, the Recess films. Uh, some really interesting, uh, like some very um, underrated Disney anime films there are. But let me leave you guys. What, like, what are some of your favorite, most underrated Disney anime movies? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Hit that bell for more notifications. This here is Team Movie Sign.